gorgeous individuals, it's Kav here, and today I'm here with a very special guest, the fabulous Stanthia Menon. She has graciously agreed to be on my channel here today, and I'm super excited to be chatting with her because if you followed me for more than a day, you'll know <laughs> I love her books. So let's start out with having you tell us a little bit about From Twinkle with Love. Okay. From Twinkle with Love is a book about an aspiring teen filmmaker who is really full of self-doubt about whether her voice belongs in the world and whether people really want to hear from somebody like her. She has all these big questions about art and love and friendship and life and this book is just all her diary entries as she tries to figure it out. So kind of going off of that, when Table Might Wish is written in a much more traditional fashion but Twinkle is written in a letter format which is very different so what was it like approaching that format? It was terrifying because I had always wanted to do an epistolary novel so I pitched the idea to my editor and they bought the book and then I realized oh hey I actually now have to write it so <laughs> it was a little bit scary but then once I let go of the internal mm -hmm. editor I'm sure that we all have it in some fashion <laughs> it was so much fun because it really lets you get into somebody's head like you really feel like you are this person and they are you and so from that point of view it was incredible. I know you did a little bit of self-publishing before you got into Dimple and Twinkle and you have these two books coming out and then you have Ron Ashish Matsuyu coming out which she claims there's a new title coming soon. <laughs> yes there is. <laughs> so why did you choose to write contemporary YA? I chose to write contemporary because it's what I love to read. Mm -hmm. I love to read contemporary YA and adults and I really just wanted to tell more like fluffy rom-com happy stuff stories about all kinds of different people and I feel like we don't have enough of that especially with marginalized mm -hmm. communities and so I just wanted to tell a story that's not an issue book and those are so important mm -hmm. but I wanted to tell a different kind of story. Yeah. So kind of going off of that, can you expand more on how and what it was like incorporating Indian culture into your work? Yes, it was amazing because like I realized how starved I was for that representation. Mm -hmm. It's not just Indian and it's not just American. It's like yeah. this fusion that's missing and I loved it because it felt like I was telling my story, mm -hmm. telling the story of all my friends, you know, and it just felt so good to do that. Who are some of your biggest writing influences when you were getting into writing? From the beginning, I was a huge Stephen King fan. Like before it was age appropriate, I was reading it. <laughs> that's probably why I have such an intense fear of monsters to this day. Stephen King, because his his characters, not his female characters, his male characters are very deep. He's like just does such an amazing job getting into their heads. Mm -hmm. And Sophie Kinsella because she's, mm. you know, she's so funny. Like she's very easily, offhandedly humorous. And I love that. I feel like she's a comedic genius. And Jenny Han because she's amazing. And she's kind of the one that made people of color rom-coms mm -hmm. like even a thing. Yeah. So yeah, Definitely. those three. Similar to that, how did you get into writing? I don't know if I got into writing because as far back as I can remember, I was writing. Mm. And so I was one of those people who was, you know, in elementary school writing on my jeans and like my parents' kitchen cabinets. And in fact, that's when my parents were like, hey, if we buy her a notebook or something, then maybe she'll stop English. <laughs> and so <laughs> that's when I started to write in notebooks. So it was never like a conscious decision to be a writer. I was always a writer. So kind of talking about when Ashish met Sweetie or whatever it will soon be called. What do you have in store for us next? Can you tell us a little bit about that or anything else you're exploring? Yes. So when Ashish met Sweetie, real title to come, you know, follows Rishi's brother, Ashish, who is like a very cocky jock type of person. And in this book, he's actually lost his mojo. He's no more the playa that he was. So he doesn't know what to do with that. One of his friends tells him, hey, your parents set up Dimple and Rishi and they did a great job. Why don't you let your parents set you up? And he was like, are you crazy? I don't date Indian girls. I probably get some Indian girl that I have nothing in common with. But eventually, because he lost his mojo, he says, okay. And his parents actually make him sign a contract about <laughs> oh, he's going to I'm date serious. this girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for these many dates and really give it a shot and he has to do the dates that they prescribe for him. He can't choose them. And so in the course of those dates, he gets his mojo back and it's a dual POV and the heroine is Sweetie and she's a fat athlete and I say fat just like the fat acceptance community does where it's just the opposite of thin and there's yep. no negative connotations attached to the word and Sweetie is an amazing runner. She's super athletic and she's dealing with a lot of 
fat phobia mm -hmm. in the South Asian community yeah. especially and so I explore that too but it's still a very sweet Suwoonie rom-com I'm so excited for it what was it like tackling fat phobia because that is a topic that often doesn't get challenged even in conversations about diversity and representation. It was hard. My weight fluctuates a lot mm -hmm. so I've been, as an adult, I've been fat at some points in my life and it's crazy how different people treat you when you're fat versus when you're not fat. But I knew that it was very important to have these conversations because we have to start somewhere. Yeah. And South Asian culture can be mm -hmm. virulently fat phobic. And so I just really wanted to get that conversation started. I tend to ask this at the end of all of my interviews. Do you have any advice for other aspiring marginalized writers out there? Yes. My advice is polish your manuscript so it's so good that they can't reject you. I mean, because it's not fun to hear, but you have to be twice as good mm -hmm. and work twice as hard. It's okay because you are twice as good and you can work twice as hard, you can do it. But you know, have this community around you of people who are where you are and who are going through what you're going through. And then just don't let the rejections get you down because eventually you will get a yes. That was all. Thank Yay! you so much for being on my channel. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course, it was so lovely. From Twinkle With Love is out now, so I will leave a link to where you can get it in the description below because it is the sweetest book and my name is in the acknowledgements, so yes. it's a good reason to get it. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day and night and I will see you soon for a brand new video. Goodbye! Bye!